clarity and closure of the viewers comments where I will take a selection of your comments and I will answer questions criticisms or just about you know anything that I might find interesting or think would be valuable in the overarching scenario of correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar because as you know or may or may not know this is a correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar oriented vessel the purpose and function of this channel is to teach correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar the grammar mechanics as well as the psychological components therein and so that's the reason why i do these and i hope you enjoy the viewers comments video comes from jonathan todd he's a member thank you for your membership jonathan he says any words of wisdom for those who do not yet possess the requisite neural pathways to grow into the psychological condition and state associated with correct sentence structure. I think what Jonathan is articulating, or more accurately, to convey what I feel like he's asking is, what advice or counsel can I share with someone who does not yet possess the neurological pathways necessary to get closure on correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar? And that's a very interesting question because if someone does not possess those neural pathways, then they probably aren't looking to learn correct sentence structure, right? So my answer, my response, my kuleana was good question. I guess one would have to correct their psychological condition of state to be in joinder with the principles of the balance of honor and grace, position of peace, neutrality, and maintenance of rule, one rule equal. Although I am a grammar tutor who teaches the psychological aspects of said grammar, I'm not a psychologist. And that's true. That's 100% true. I'm not going to pass a psychological diagnosis on people. But I can generally tell when someone possesses the neurological pathways to learn this or not. And the, the lack of those neural pathways is usually contingent upon a lack of a balance of honor and grace or a position of peace and neutrality, or maintaining rule one, rule equal. And those people are usually individuals who hold some sort of religious belief or authoritarian belief. Those are usually the people that, uh, that lack those necessary neurological pathways. Next question comes from Brian, another member. Thank you for your membership, Brian. And they ask, how do I super chat donation? And then I answer, when you are in a live chat, there should be a dollar sign or some icon on the right of the box you type your message in. Click it. Or you may click the super thanks icon under each video. Now I'm going to try and go over to YouTube right now and see if I can show Brian exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so Brian, if you follow my little cursor here, you see this thanks here under the video? You can click that and it will direct you on how to do a super thanks. And if you are in a live setting, in a live video, you will see when you go to put a chat in, there will be like a uh, some sort of icon over here, like a dollar sign or a trophy. I don't know what it is. But you click on that and it will give you the option of doing a super thanks or a super sticker or something like that. A way to show your support. You can click on that and it will direct you to how to show support. Those are the two ways that I know how to do it. You've already become a member so you know about joining. So to the best of my knowledge, that, that's how it's done. Next comment comes from Jens R who is also a member. Thank you very much for your uh, membership, Jens. Great. Many thanks for this example of real life. Interesting that this theater act simulates a full handover of both documents. Ah, Jens is talking about the skit that I did where it was a portrayal of my interaction with a TSA agent that I had a couple years ago where 
I handed over a driving license and my CPAS C treaty. And I respond, I have no issue with credentialing myself, physically handing proof to another contract party, to anyone. I find that those who flat out refuse to credential themselves when a Vaseline with fiction authority, i.e. the TSA agent, requests it, end up going through a circus act that is not necessary. If one truly performs with a position of peace and neutrality, balance of honor and grace and maintenance of rule one, rule equal. So, if, you know, and I'm referring to these people that claim some sort of sovereign citizen, which, yes, I'm aware that that is a, an oxymoron, they, but it, it identifies a certain type of individual that goes around refusing to cred credential themselves when a fiction Vasily confronts them, like a police officer or someone. If you show me your identification, please, they're asking you to identify yourself for a reason. And if you refuse to do that, I mean... Yes, it's your choice. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you want to be a private citizen walking around in the public, that's up to you. But you get what you get when you do that. I have found that when one is upfront, transparent, willing to show their ship's papers, willing to put their face and name out there, credential themselves, if they've got nothing to hide, life is much easier that way. It's not about holding on to some ideology for me, you know. I mean, it may be important to some people and, and, you know, bravo to you individuals who, you know, you don't want to credential yourself and then you find yourself in jail for the night because you refuse to provide identity or whatever. Then that's up to you. Like I said, you get what you get. Um, for me, I have no problem credentialing myself. I am who I say I am. I'm not, uh, I'm not hiding anything. I prefer it if people know who I am when I'm out in the public. It's just not an issue for me. So, hope that gives a little bit more closure for on that uh, topic. Next comment comes from Oliver Cromwell. I am new to this. Thanks for the videos. Do you have a website or where we get a template to make a CPAS? Great video, by the way. Do we have to use proper sentence structure in the YouTube comment section? Thanks again. And then I answer, thank you for the comment. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, feel free to study the forum plus videos on this channel or contact me at blah, blah, blah to apply for a workshop. I highly recommend not using a CPAS C treaty until you have closure on grammar and know what a CPAS is and what it's used for. And I 100% stand behind that. Uh, I focus on the grammar, Oliver. That's the be all end all of it. And as I can tell by your comment, this is probably the first video that you've watched, uh, which is the skit video that I did. I highly recommend watching a few more videos. I mean, you have to know what it is you're doing before you do it, right? If you want to be safe out there. I'm more than happy to help anyone create a CPAS C treaty using themselves as their own authority. However, there is a caveat to that. If you want me to help you create a CPAS C treaty, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And if you feel that you have the grammar knowledge to do it, I will give you a correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar test. It's 10 to 15 minutes long. If you pass the test, I'll be more than happy to enter into a contract with you for CPAS C treaty. If you don't pass the test, then more study is required and you're going to need to establish a foundation of grammar before you do anything because that's the rule of thumb you got to know what it is you're doing before you do it you must have closure on the grammar in order to safely navigate through the continuum using it period end of story next comment comes from joe d jason i was curious to learn who you considered having greater skill in this technology than yourself and I think I heard the name Raven, but you said it so fast I couldn't make it out. Apologies for speaking uh, so fast. And I gave the name here. It's colon Raven hyphen Farhad hyphen Tohidi colon Eferin. That is the name. That is the name of my brother, much beloved brother and tutor, who guided me to the closure on correct sentence structure. All credit, honor, grace, and everything goes to Raven. Next comment comes from the regular viewer, Dylan's voice. He said, when you say federal, does that just mean national government? 
Now, again, Dylan's been on this channel. He's been subscribed for at least two years, I think. And they're one of those individuals that I'm very happy and very, very grateful for their reoccurring viewership. You know, keep coming back. So I give them the gift of my finite mean of federal from my correct sentence structure dictionary, which is for the federal of this finite mean is with the claim of this pledge treaty trust covenant with the authorization by a contract. And then, of course, mathematically certified backwards, it would read for a contract of the authorization is with the pledge treaty trust covenant of the claim with the finite mean by the federal. Period. That's what federal means. It tells you exactly what I mean by federal. Positioning every fact with correctness. The next comment thread comes from Joe D. again. And Joe D. says, Is it possible to write law maxims in the form of this technology, i.e. statements such as, The creation cannot be greater than the creator. And then I said, If that's what you want to do with it, it's up to you. Meaning, Yes, yes, you can. Joe D. Uh, interpreted what I said, I guess, in a way that I didn't mean for it to be interpreted. And they said, I only asked what I thought was a simple question. So that's a little bit condescending. Maybe he thinks it's simple to him. And maybe I made it into something complex because maybe I'm not as smart as Joe D. I don't know. I don't claim to be an expert on this subject. I asked that I might learn a little something. I have heard that there is a maxim that states there is no harm in asking questions. Maybe I got it wrong. Oh, and now they're, <laughs> now they're trying to be cheeky about it. So in turn, I corresponded. But, oh, hold on. Joe D had another comment to make. In answer to the question, is it possible to rewrite law maxims, this technology, perhaps the answer is no. I don't understand how he could get that interpretation of this. If that's what you want to do with it, it's up to you. There's no negative in that statement. I don't understand why he's reading that into it. So then I say, the answer is yes, if that's what you want to do with it. As I said, it's up to you. I'm not meaning to offend. I'm being blunt and straightforward. Perhaps a simple yes would have sufficed. And that's what I find with individuals that, and that's why I responded the way I did. I didn't get confrontational or anything about it. Because again, I don't take anything personal. And I understand that people coming on here are usually not used to others being blunt with them. They're just not used to the bluntness of being straightforward. They're used to people, you know, beating around the bush or, or whatever it is. And probably, I guess, thought I was being sarcastic with them, which I wasn't. I was being straightforward. They're not used to bluntness. Let's put it that way. It can be kind of harsh to people who are not used to it. If I'm just speaking plainly to you, telling what, you what I think and feel straight up, with no filters, and you're not used to that, it's probably going to, it's probably going to, I don't know, maybe sort of rub you the wrong way a little bit because you're not used to that. So then Dylan's voice says, Joe D, can you prove, I think he got one too many O's in that proof, that the creation cannot be greater than the creator. Who or what is the creator? Joe D says, Dylan's voice, this law maxim is framed in international law. It existed before you or I was born. Perhaps you haven't heard of it, and perhaps you haven't heard of maxims. They are described as indisputable truths and form the basis of international law. There is another maxim that states only a fuel disputes a maxim. That's hilarious. So I see where this uh, individual's knowledge base comes from. It's firmly rooted in the fiction. Therefore, I don't believe I have anything to prove regarding the term creator or creation. However, you may have heard or seen the phrase, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Is there a creation? Did it have a creator? Are questions for everyone to consider to draw their own conclusions? Well, those are very good questions. Um, but the th see, the thing is here, and, th and this is going into waters that are outside the boundaries of the buoys of this channel. Talking about personal belief systems and things like that. Bringing in religion into the whole thing. What he's talking about is fiction. Law maxim, whether it was written before we were born or not, was not written in correct sentence structure, so therefore it's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction nonsense. There really is only one rule, and to put it in a negative condition of state, it's do no harm. That's the only maxim 
that one need follow <laughs> to be correct. All right? That's how I feel about it anyways. Or to put it another way, just participate with the balance of the honor and the grace, the maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, and the position of peace and neutrality. Easy peasy. Then Joe D. responds to me and says, I confess I may have misunderstood what you meant when you said it's up to you. Perhaps I didn't explain enough to clarify my initial question. I like learning languages. I speak several languages quite fluently. According to qualified examiners, why would Joe feel the need to say that? Is he telling me how smart he is and trying to certify it at the same time? I see quantum language as an interesting challenge. It's not quantum language. It's quantum grammar. There's a difference. Plain English is a language. Quantum grammar is a technology. I see quantum language as an interesting challenge because of my interest in computer languages and algebraic equations. I have often wondered if it was possible to create a spoken and written human language that would interface with a machine at machine level and be used for solving logistic problems. In order to help me become more familiar with this technology, I thought it may be useful to learn some common phrases in English like famous quotes or wheel, we will known sayings, I think they mean well, known sayings, proverbs, which may help to provide an intuitive feel for learning quantum language. But this may be difficult if those I am trying to communicate with criticize what I'm saying when they think I'm making an unsupported claim when actually I was using words to try and identify something. Okay. Joe D., I'm going to tell you right here and right now, if this is going to get you upset, someone challenging you right off the bat about something you say, if this is how you're going to react to it, then you're probably going to have find learning quantum grammar to be quite the uphill challenge. I can't help speaking Babel because it's all I've ever known, and it's difficult for me to communicate with others in math speak because I've only used maths to solve computational problems. Well, you can't really use math to communicate with people. How can you communicate with numbers? By themselves. You need grammar to articulate mathematical equations. You need grammar. Period. End of story. That's why it's called correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. It's not called correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax math. It's grammar. Grammar comes at the end because it's the authority. All right. How we articulate things determines our fate. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, new people that come on here might feel a little sort of uh, exposed, I guess, with people being blunt with them or calling them to the carpet to prove their claims or question them about what they say. Um, because that's what it's all about is questioning things. Like if you see in the other comment, Joe D says, have you ever heard the maxim? What did he say? Is nothing wrong with asking a question or something? What did he say? Let me look up here real quick. I heard that there's a maxim that states there's no harm in asking questions. And then Dylan's voice asks Joe a question, and then Joe criticizes Dylan voice, Dylan's voice for asking the question. So there's a dichotomy right off the bat there. Funny stuff. Thanks for the comment, Joe D., and I hope, uh, hope you keep coming back. Develop a little thicker skin, maybe. Just unsolicited uh, advice. Pay no mind. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.